I don't think the internet really needed another chocolate chip cookie video, but here's one anyway. Today we're making Smitten Kitchens chocolate chip cookies. Now let's go! All right, we're gonna start by adding unsalted room temperature butter to a stand mixer. You could get away with a hand mixer if you don't have one of these. Now we'll add our light brown sugar. So my brother who went on a bit of a cookie rampage recently sent me this recipe and it's from smittenkitchen.com. They have an incredible cookie selection on their website. I will put a link in the description. Now we'll equip the paddle and now we're gonna begin the process of creaming the butter and the sugar. It's gonna get all nice and fluffy. So just about medium speed, maybe a little higher. And you'll notice when you do this, the butter rides up really high on the side of the KitchenAid. Kind of annoying, you have to scrape it down periodically. Or I just have some hot water here, fairly hot. And you wanna just dip a little kitchen towel in, wring it out a little bit. And while mixing, you would just place the hot towel around like this and you'll heat up the bowl and that butter will just fall right back into the bottom. This also works with a blowtorch. If you have one of those, it's an easier method. I'm just doing it with a hot towel because I know everybody can do this. So just keep creaming. We'll cream this for about three and a half minutes. And then we're gonna add two eggs, just one at a time. Now you wanna wait till that first egg is totally worked in and then add the other one. It only takes a second. Coming back to the hot towel trick for a second here. Boom, eggs are in. Okay, let's stop. Now baking powder, sprinkle it straight over the dough. This is what the recipe says. Same deal with the baking soda. Get it everywhere. Then we'll add our salt as well at this point. Now just mix all that up. Now we add the flour all at once. And now we mix in short bursts like this. We just really don't wanna over mix this. Right when it's almost together, we'll just stop. You wanna use some kind of bittersweet chocolate for this recipe, although you could just freestyle and use whatever you want. This is Valrona Manjari. It's a special kind of chocolate I've been using for so many years now. It's really fruity, really delicious, I love it. But since these are huge, I'm just gonna chop them in half. Now while mixing, I'm gonna add the chocolate in. We don't wanna over mix this because we'll break the chocolate. Oh, calm down, just about there. I'm happy just to work the rest together with my hands a little bit. All right. So I did put quite a bit less chocolate in this recipe because they had one and a quarter pound, which I don't know, maybe I should have trusted it, but it was just so much. I'm just making sure this chocolate is nicely distributed and also just making sure it's together. I don't want to overwork it, so I'm gonna stop right there. Okay, now the bad news is <laughs> you're gonna have to cover this with plastic and put it in your fridge for 24 hours. Now you can make cookies any size you want. I'm gonna do about a two and a half ounce cookie, so pretty big. That looks good. We gotta make sure there's a couple inches in between them. Now I'm gonna bake at 350 Fahrenheit. Okay, I did mine for about 16 minutes since they're pretty big. Now what I'm gonna do here while that chocolate is still hot is just sprinkle a little more salt. There's already salt in the dough, but this can only do a lot of good and it's gonna stick to that hot chocolate. So this cookie recipe is actually supposed to be pretty flat. A big reason I don't do a lot of baking recipes, doughs, bread, stuff like that, is because I live over 6,000 feet in elevation and it gets really weird. But for you, the recipe that's posted in the description is absolutely absolutely correct. And if you're at sea level, they should end up being flatter. I've also got some good news for you if you made it this far into the video. So last night after four hours of chilling this dough in the fridge, I tried one out just to see because you know, nobody wants to wait a full day to bake their cookies. And they looked exactly the same and I'm assuming the texture will probably be exactly the same or really close. So if you have the foresight, go ahead and make it the day before, but you can get away with doing this for a couple hours. I don't see why not. The last thing I'm gonna do is just get these onto a wire rack so they can cool properly. So I'll let those cool for a good 30, 40 minutes before I even try one. Let's see what's up. Mmm. <laughs> mm. mm. Yes, it's a real melt in your mouth type of cookie. And the chocolate with the mold and sea salt is just so good. Well, my friends, that was video 29 out of 30. We have a guest star tomorrow to bring it home, but until then, you know I love you and I'm out.